Lengths and weights of rods. A rod is a lever, basically. The longer a rod, the more line it can lever around, the easier it can move longer lines around, and the more accurately it can move longer lines around. I like to choose a rod that is the longest I can cope with depending on the environment, the maximum length I can get away with. You might be in a boat. You might need to keep that line way, way above your partner's head. This is a double-handed rod. It's 12 foot 6 inches long. It has two hands to help us move around this longer lever. If we only had one handle here, it would be quite hard to move this much longer lever around. If we change the position of our hands and put the fulcrum here and move the rod with our bottom hand here, the rod becomes much more light, much more delicate, but we're still retaining the extraordinary length and leverage capabilities of a longer rod. When you're salmon fishing, I'll use a 15 foot rod in low water. Why? Because actually I want to approach the fish from a different angle. I want to keep well away from the fish because they're spooky, it's low water, they can see you more easily. And I need to keep well away and make a long cast with a delicate line. It is a rule that where the environment restricts the use of a long rod, you have to go down to a short rod. If I've got overhanging bushes, it means that the size of rod I'm going to need is much shorter, simply because of the overhanging bushes and the trees and the obstructions I've got. This is a six foot rod. It's made out of fiberglass. And if you look, I can bend it fully. If the tip of the rod is approximately six feet away from me now, when I'm casting, the rod will bend, making it shorter. So now the tip of the rod is only four or three feet away from me. And then when I hook a fish and play it, the rod's going to bend even more and it's going to become two feet away, away from me. You need a rod to bend, but be aware it shortens when you do so. Fly rods come in different weights, anything from sort of triple zero all the way up to 14, 15 weight. With any rod, you need weight to load it, to bend it properly. Why would you use something like, let's say a nine weight fly line on a nine weight fly rod? Why? You would use that to cast big flies. It's a heavy fly line. It's designed to cast big, big flies, sometimes this long. If you go down and pick a naught weight fly line and use it on a naught weight fly rod, you would never be able to cast a big fly like that. You're casting small dry flies, nymphs, spiders, things like that. So the quarry is different, isn't it? Generally, I always opt for the longest rod I can get away with and the lightest line I can get away with, depending on the size of fly I'm choosing to cast. Why do I fish a three weight on a still water? Well, first of all, if you use the right line and the right leader and the right flies and the right rod, I can get distances like this. Check this out. Massive pickup, massive long line. Flat calm, leaders perfectly straight in that flat calm. Traditionally, people use 10 foot 7 weights, 9 foot 8 weights, especially in the UK for still water fishing. The theory there is that that weight and that sort of stiffness of rod, that strength of rod, is needed to pull in big fish. That can be misleading. How we play a fish is very important. You know, and it's not about having a load of power in the butt section to play big fish. It's about having a load of power spread over the entire length of the rod. Okay, and if you look at that bend on that, that's what you're looking for. You see people playing stiff rods. They're only playing it from the top third of the rod. So they're basically only playing it from a four weight, not a seven weight. If you use the full length of the rod, this two weight's got more power than an average man playing it on a seven because I'm bending the whole rod. Having a rod that spreads the load over the entire length means we have greater shock absorption, which means we can use lighter tippets, smaller flies, and the fish will accept the fly rather than reject it because they can see the tippet. It's very important in terms of rod length and how much it bends to assess the level of shock absorption.